Hello and welcome to Catch More Media. In tonight's show, we join Armour Joward at the lovely Lawn Farm Fishery near Cambridge for a masterclass in pellet waggler and short pole fishing. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Tom. Having quite the day, it would seem. Yeah. <laughs> It's very good, very good. It's, uh, considering it's not red hot, it's actually quite a chilly April, early April morning. I can't believe how well it's fishing. I'm going to say, I mean, that one, I've only just got here, but I saw you, you waggling at the water and straight away there was one on, wasn't there? Oh, there was, mate, there was. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an incredible start, really. It really is. I've just seen one mouthing at the top as well. I mean, that water's very chilly and it's, uh, it's incredible. But that just goes to show how good this fishery really is. So you're very yeah. fortunate, aren't you? Because I know it's only about, what, five minutes from your house or something? Yeah, literally five minutes. Oh, look at that, yeah. lovely mirror. Literally five minutes. Very lucky to come and try things out, like, you know, any time. Look at that. So the plan today, I'm obviously, you're catching on the, on the waggler well at the moment. Yeah, just on a pellet waggler at the moment. Um, but you've got a bomb set up and also you're hoping to catch on the short pole. Yeah, it'd be nice to catch on the short pole as well. Uh, not so much carp. There's a lot of bream here in this lake, a lot of barbel. Yeah. Um, some big roach, you know, just kind of everything that swims with worms and casters and, um, you know, just worms and casters really. Just fishing for everything that swims for bites. You can catch everything on worms in here. Carp, barbel, bream, roach, ev chub, everything. Awesome. So a three-pronged approach. I want you to tell me everything you're doing, but first, I think it's only fair to let you get back out and catch another one. Yeah, it? thanks, Tom. Okay, in terms of the tackle I'm using today, I've, uh, on this pellet waggler rig, I'm fishing, um, obviously, an 8 mil banded pellet. I've got that on, a, on a, a slightly... I always like to fish a slightly longer hair on a, on a, on a pellet waggler because I find a lot of these fish, obviously, unlike when they're on the bottom, they... Um, they kind of swim around, they, they're swimming up and down, they, the pellets wafting more so. So I just like the, to, a longer pellet, um, a longer hair on the, on the pellet waggler between the hair and the hook. Um, I find also has a better hook hold as well, that the pellets away from the fish's face. I'm fishing today, I'm fishing a size 14 Guru MWG hook, incredibly strong, eyed hook obviously for the hair rig. I have a little piece of silicon just to keep the hair from spinning and keep everything nice and straight and in, uh, in a line. Uh, I'm fishing 018. A Reeve um, hook length line, which is incredibly strong. 018 is about right for this time of year, uh, which I probably use for the majority of my pellet waggler fishing. Where you can catch anything from fish up to say, you know, double figures really. Uh, it's not a snaggy lake, it's quite an open, deep lake, so I can play them out on this nice soft rod. My main line is a six pound Drennan method line. Um, the actual float itself is a seven gram Drennan shorty pellet waggler. Um, which is with the, with the discs in as well, just to stop that dive in so deep. And I can move this around with the stoppers. So I've got a little, an inch gap between them, so it just runs on there. The float actually runs on there. I can change this float if the wind gets up to a bigger one, or if the wind drops like it just has, I can actually drop it to a smaller float if need be. Um, if I need to cast past where I'm fishing, I can just put a slightly bigger float on just with a snap link. The rod itself is a 10 foot Reeve C CM6 commercial rod. Um, absolutely made for this type of fishing. Uh, small wagglers, uh, fishing up to about 20, 25 metres. Perfect, the, the perfect amount of eyes. The action is absolutely beautiful. The rod butt's very short. It's a very light, well-balanced rod, incredibly strong for its weight uh, and slimness. Um, the, the eyes stand off nicely so they don't, your line doesn't uh, stick if it's raining and it certainly doesn't twist around the, the tips and so on. Uh, and the reel is coupled with a, a reed 3,000 feeder reel, but by no means not just a feeder reel. I use it for pellet waggler fishing. Just a perfectly sized spool, houses the line perfectly, good line lay, 10 bearings, winding power's incredible, and it balances to the rod really nice in size as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, what I'm doing is I'm fishing eight mil pellets. We've got a, uh, a bit of a face wind. Eight mil pellets, there's a plateau sat out in front of me, which is about four foot deep. Uh, the fish seem to be in the top layers today and uh, just fishing eight mil pellet on a pellet waggler. At the moment, I've got it set three foot deep. Um, obviously, if it was a lot warmer, I'd be fishing even shallower than that. It's just been a case of sometimes casting, waiting, other times just feeding straight on top, uh, moving it, leaving it. You know, it's, uh, it's not really very warm at the moment, so 
it's just a case of just uh, trying to ring the changes, maybe just cast it short, a few fish are backing off, go past them, um, and just keep fish coming really. Uh, but uh, at the moment they seem to be sat around anything from two to three foot down, there's nothing really coming up, just what couple of chub shallow, but everything else is coming about a foot off bottom with a pellet waggler. It's, uh, most of the fish are carp, I've had three chub, probably about two and a half to three pound each. So in some, some ways they're actually as big as the carp and a lot easier to get in as well in this deep water. But, uh, sometimes waiting's better, sometimes just keep casting. And what I've found at the moment is feeding three or four eight mil pellets. Just let them splash. Just reel the float up to the rod. Cast straight on top of them. Get the rod down quick. A lot of the bites, if you do get them, they could come any time the minute that float hits the hits the water like that and then there's fish on these fish really do know where the where the depth is as well the minute they come over that plateau they're straight down into the deep water and they oh it's come off it's, uh, there'll be another pellets for a while just give it three more eight mil pellets Keep, keep that food going through the water. Straight on top, feather it down. Keep everything tight to the side. Because obviously the minute that float goes like I did a minute ago, you're straight into those fish. And if I don't catch once that pellet settles, I'm just giving it a foot, about maybe a, move it about a foot or two foot, just to lift that pellet up off and because uh, those carp are obviously swimming around off the bottom and hopefully just you know one might just see the pellet and if I don't get one on the second move I'm just recasting so just recasting again I'm fishing about 20 25 meters this time I'll give it four pellets let them splash And then just cast straight on top of them like that keep it rod low like that and then we're straight in so there's a quite a distinct pattern the way they're feeding they they can you catch one and they back off and then they come back straight back into the feed again so keep seem to be now keep casting and just three four pellets moving it doesn't seem to be working it seems to be they're coming to the splash of the actual pellet waggler they really know where the deep water is see beautiful action to this rod it's only 10 feet it's more than big enough even with a face wind the fish are line is you can cast comfortably to anywhere you can feed eight mil pellets so there's no need to fish a bigger rod because if you can't feed eight mil pellets there there's no point the rods come in a, a, a 10 11 and a 12 so if you need a bigger rod and fish maybe 10 mil pellets you can just up the rod by a foot at a time accordingly to how far you need to be fishing on a short cast like this, 20, 25 metres, 10 foot rod's really nice. When they're short like this, you can just play the fish under your feet. You haven't got a big rod up in the air and fish kiting. And coupled with a 3000 reel as well, a reef 3000 reel is a, a really nice light combination, but lots of winding power and playing power. These fish are averaging anything probably around the five pound mark today. A lot of anglers play off a drag. I've got the drag part set, but it's set quite tight today because the rod's a soft rod. I don't feel you need to worry too much. If there were bigger fish, I probably would but uh, I just play off the handle and part on the drag.
what I do as well is when a fish is playing deep like this, I don't worry about it so much. I just feed some pellets and keep those fish interested as well. Not as important today because I'm not in a match, but if I was in a match and I've got anglers fishing maybe 15, 20 yards away, I'd always want to keep some pellets going through the water so fish don't disappear out of my swim, especially as I've just hooked one as well, they might have dispersed. Just keep fish interested in front of me. Waggler 7 gram, which in a face wind, as you can see, that fish is about 8 to 10 pound. So you can see the importance of having a really stiff, strong land in a handle as well. I'm sat quite high up off the water, so lifting fish out of the water at this height, the importance for a strong land in a handle is a, is a must. And a strong rod, of course. Certainly give you arm make these fish. He's a lovely common now. Doesn't look like he's ever seen a hook before. But I'm sure in this lake he has. in the net. Lovely. Beautiful fish. See why you need a strong landing at handle. But your arms are getting tired now, aren't they, Armour? Oh, really tired, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Lactic acid's definitely hit home now. It's been really interesting, though, to see how you've been fishing this, because although a lot of people might think it looks solid, and it is pretty solid, it's not been a matter of just chucking in where you've been feeding, is it? No, it, we started, uh, when we started, the first few casts, it was good because we could catch right on top of the feed with maybe just three and four pellets. Yeah. Um, and now, what I've noticed now is feed a little bit more, maybe five or six pellets, not a lot more, but you got to remember, they're eight mil pellets. Yeah. And fire them at about 20 metres, but fish about 25 metres. You're and actually fishing just past your bait. Yeah, then. just past where the feed's going. And it seems to be what's happening, they're coming into the feed and then backing off, but then the splash of the waggle is enough just to bring them in and just nick, just keep mugging one fish, you know, every time. it's. Uh, I'm definitely getting more bites past the feed than I'm on the feed, and what I'm catching on the feed has been five or six chub, so where these are sip, sat just past them. Yeah, they're really good quality carp armor. I mean, oh. I think the smallest you've had is probably, well, this one you've got now, about five pounds. Yeah, isn't it? probably four or five pounds is the smallest fish. Even the chub are, you know, kind of best part of two, two and a half, three pounds. Um, but yeah, it's been fantastic, mate. But just learning that flicking, you know, casting around almost like if, if we were pole fishing, you can imagine mugging past. Yes. It's almost doing the same thing with a pellet waggler today. It's worked yeah. really, really nicely. I've got to tell you though, folks, he did get beat up by a 15 pounder that then jumped back in the lake, didn't you, mate? I did, yeah. We were, I was posing with it and it, it kind of just, uh, I didn't want it to drop on the platform or anything, so it was a case of having to let it swim off. It gave you a couple <laughs> of slaps, didn't it, and jumped back in. Oh, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next, Arma? It's getting a little bit windy now. Are you going to have a go on the pole? Yeah, now that wind's got up a little bit, I'm going to have a little go on the pole and see if we can catch some fish on the pole now. Because uh, there's a lot of fish in this lake, like bream and, um, you know, obviously other fish, barbel, chub on the pole to be had as well. So that'll be my last fish on the pellet waggler. And now it's a, a little look on the pole line. Awesome. So I'm a pole tackle for today. Uh, I'm fishing a, a, a it's, it's a big rig this is because um, obviously what I'm fishing for are big fish. So I'm starting off on a Tubertini 175 number three, which I'd say is probably equivalent of a big 16 stroke 14. Uh, I'm fishing an 018 hook length, 020 main line. Uh, the, the line is Reeve uh, rig line and, uh, and the 018 is the Reeve hook length line. I've got two number, two number 10 droppers. 
I've got a bulk of number nines. Uh, the float itself is a, a half gram Mick Wilkinson AJ. AJ meaning uh, the, my initials, because Mick designed these floats specifically for me. It's basically, it's a carbon stem. It's got a, a very, 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 very strong uh, compressed uh, foam body, which the line won't bed in. Uh, they all shot perfectly. Um, incredibly strong. The eyes never pull. It's a 1.2 mil hollow plastic bristle. I've got about just about a foot of line between the float and the uh, and the connector, and I've got a dropper because the wind's in our face today. So what I want to do is keep that rig right under the pole tip where I've fed. The elastic is a 2.3 mil um, hollow reeve elastic, which is the blue, and I've got that got that coupled up into a top three power kit, which is on a puller. Um, so I can play anything from, you know, obviously if I hook a small fish, it comes out, it's quite soft. I've got it set soft and I can also play bigger fish on the puller kit. Uh, incredibly strong power kit on this R16 pole. And that's about, I would say, nine foot deep on the shelf. So now I'm going to go on a chop worm. I'm going to do it, chop them in the pot. I'm going to put about 150 mil of worms in, which is roughly just under, well, it's just over half the half a drenum pot and I'm also going to chop them quite coarse because I'm fishing for bigger fish I don't want to catch little perch which there's a lot of in this lake um, I'm looking for just bonus fish and what I'm going to be fishing is maybe two-thirds of a dendrobina and then on top I'm just going to put and everything's going to be cupped in no ground bait I'm just going to cup everything in loose It's about nine feet deep where I'm fishing, and that's at about five and a half meters out. So I'm just going to put them in with a marker over there. And do the same again, about the same amount. So it's about the equivalent of just over a big pot full of bait. Again, I'm going to chop these quite coarse. And about just a big handful of casters, so it's about 200 mil of bait in total. So in total, there's 400 mil gone in straight away, which seems like a lot of bait. But there's so many silver fish in this lake, and I am looking to pick out the bigger fish. The amount of that that'll be eaten is uh, a good amount, a good percentage of it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cup straight over the top with a big handful of casters and no worms. And leave that for a little while. Settle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put on, I'm just going to nick the end of a worm. So it's about two thirds of a dendrobina. Seems like a big bait, and it is a big bait, especially when it gets in the water. But I'm not looking for small fish. What I've done is I've plumbed up it's at about six meters, five and a half, six meters, and is a is a slope and it just starts to flatten out and it's a it's a very it's a gravelly bottom so it's very hard. And what I've done is it's about nine feet, eight and a half, nine foot of water, and I've um, put in just cup bait in there. One thing I've realised here when that water starts to warm up like it now now it has coming into summer is a lot of little fish. And what I'm doing is I'm fishing for big skimmers, bream. Any bonus fish that live in the lake that eat worms and casters. So it could be anything from big roach. Uh, I've caught chub, um, barbel, carp. There's everything you can catch on them. I'm not using any ground bait. I'm just using just chop worms and casters and big handfuls. So I'm feeding about, topping up with only about 100 mil, but my, my initial feed was about 400 mil of bait. And that was 200 mil of casters, 200 mil of chop worms. It just, the best thing to do is just pop them straight in, get them to the bottom, just get them on the bottom and uh, fish over the top and fish out every cup full of feed. 
Um, seems to be working. I've probably had a dozen, 15 good skimmers straight away, some big rod um, straight away. There's a lot of little perch in here which are a nuisance. And that's another reason why I don't trickle bait in, because they just draws more and more of those little fish. Whereas feeding the way I'm doing it tends to feed them off, and that's uh, I've only caught two of them, so that proves that's working. Uh, I've lost one big fish, and there's one now, and I've lost one big fish, but uh, I think it was a foul of carp. But uh, this short pole line is a, is a really good line on, on this lake, and it works on a lot of commercial fisheries, just where that flattens out that that bottom where that ledge is. Uh, it's a very deep lake, so. Uh, I don't fish big rigs, I'm only fishing half a gram. Uh, one thing I've realized in this, in this, even though you want to get your bait down quickly, I've just, they, they do watch it coming down, especially skimmers. Uh, they're not coming up in the water to feed, but the, you know, the fish are probably in the last foot. But uh, I just like a light rig. It just seems to get me more bites on this lake. It always has done. So I fish probably the biggest rig I'll use on here is probably three quarters of a gram. And it's a deep lake up to 12 feet. But today I'm only fishing half a gram because I'm fishing on that shallow ledge. And I'm fishing heavy. The elastics are heavy because there's a lot of barbel in this lake and carp. And the fish aren't hook and line shy this time of year. So there's no, no need to fish too light. You can always scale down. But the last thing I want to do is start getting smashed up and leave loads of hooks in fish's mouth. But... Uh, but both lines have been good, the pellet waggler's been good and the pole line's equally as good for what I'm fishing for, both target species, carp and silvers, and the silvers are, on, on the whole are quite a good size. So they're really good weight builders. Uh, but uh, I'm fishing, I started on a big piece of dendra bean and now I'm fishing about, well I started on two thirds of a dendra, now I'm fishing about half a dendra. Seems to be good for the size of the fish I'm catching. Uh, fishing about four inches over depth and just lifting and dropping. It's not, not often, just if I don't get a bite within a couple of minutes, I just lift the rig out of the water about six, eight inches and let it drop. Just inducing an odd fish, especially with worms. They do like to see it moving about. What a great day Armour had at Lawn Farm. With well over £100 a carp and a host of silverfish, it's certainly one of the most hectic days filming I've had so far. Join us next week when we join five times world champion Alan Scothorne for a masterclass in slider fishing at the lovely Poolsbrook Reservoir near Chesterfield. Until then folks, tight lines.